What is up my fellow sinners and things that go bump in the night. Welcome back to yet another Creature of the Night. I am your host Toxin, your friendly neighborhood sinner. Today, you know, since I covered the first one, I thought I will go over the second one, of course. And it's one of my favorites. Of course, you know, the first one's timeless. I'm speaking, of course, of Blade 2. Four, three, two, one. Keep your friends close. Keep your enemies closer. Aaron Wesley Snipes, Chris Christo Christofferson, Ron Perlman, Lenore Valeria, Norman Reedus, Thomas uh, Kretcherson, he's the guy who plays uh, Demosquinos, and Luke Gross, and director GDT, Guillermo del Toro, uh, writers Marv Wolfman, that's a badass last name, Gene, and Gene Collin, Colin. Yeah. For the longest time, I did not know that GDT uh, actually directed this, uh, but I can now, you know, watching it and seeing some of his uh, his newer stuff and throughout his career makes a lot of sense. It's a lot. Uh, if you uh, have Hulu, or I think it's still on Hulu, if you're a big fan fan of The Strain, he actually wrote the books and I think he helped direct it, direct it as well. Uh, the Reapers in this film bear a strong resemblance to the vampires in that film. Although the tongue is longer and how they get infected is a little bit different, obviously. Now, Blade 2, you know, um, where do we last leave him off? He lost Whistler. He killed uh, La Magra. And so this is just a continuation. He doesn't have that doctor with him anymore. Uh, he actually has Norma Reedus, who actually plays Scud. Somebody he rescued from a vampire attack and now is helping him with his weaponry. But with a big twist at the end, guys. Stay tuned. But he's uh, he's actually on the hunt because apparently Whistler is still alive, and they kidnapped him and they have him hidden somewhere in some warehouse somewhere. So he's been, I guess, go it looks like he's been going all across the world looking for him until he finds uh, a few vampires that know where he's at. And of course, you know, he does his thing, killing anything in his way, and then you know, <laughs> interrogating the vampires uh, that won't tell him where he's at. Cool way he interrogates him. Uh, he actually got him off his motorcycle, and he's wearing a helmet, and he Blade pushes his helmet up against the tire and starts revving the engine. He starts making the wheel go, and uh, it's scraping and going and digging into the helmet until eventually it splits in half, and then, you know, it's like, hey, what's next is his head, and he, you know he wasn't going to stop. He finds Whistler. He was going to kill him, but he injects him. He, takes, he brings him home, injects him with some kind of serum, and tells him, hey, you know, uh, in the morning, those blinds are going to go up in whether you're cured or not. So if you're cured, you don't have the vampire or whatever in you, then you're good. And if not, then you're, you know, I'm going to lose you all over again. And after the, uh, <clears throat> after that, he does, uh, you know, obviously Whistler gets cured. Whistler doesn't really like that uh, Scud is taking over his business and changing a lot of shit and basically moving everything around. So, you know, the old generation versus the new generation, how it is today. Uh, uh, they are actually, their warehouse or where because you know they're always like out in the outskirts of town in some abandoned building or some machine factory that's no longer running. Uh, they get invaded by two ninja samurai vampires. They are stealthy and he goes toe to toe with them. They beat the shit out of Whistler. Um, uh, Scud gets scared and turns on the lights to blind to try to blind them to help out Blade. Blade goes toe to toe with one of them and it looks like their skill set of the sword is damn near matched. Uh, and it turns out, you know, the one who was fighting uh, was the daughter of, like, I guess a head vampire. Uh, her name was Nisa. And she's the daughter of De uh, Demoskinos. And he's, like, apparently he runs fucking air. That's what I got from him. It's not really said, but he's well protected. He's in a facility that no one knows where it's at. So, yeah, they, they come to Blade because there is a problem. They have a common enemy now. There is a strain called the Reaper, uh, the Reaper strain, and it does something differently to vampires. Like these things feed not only on humans but on vampires as well. Um, they lose their bottom jaw, their the bottom lip, and all that, along with their neck going down the neck, opens up. So there is again, you, there's no bottom jaw, so it's just open with a weird tongue that attaches itself, and that's how it injects the virus. So not only does it feed on you, it injects you with the virus and makes you one of them. Uh, there's two little like prawns on each side of the lips that when they bite into you, they kind of paralyze you so they can continue feeding. Yeah, so it affects humans and vampires as well, changing them. So yeah, they're like, hey, you know, he's jacking us up, but you know, once he's done with us, because he hates us, 
who, is it, who do you think he's going to turn on next? He's going to turn on your humans. And how they describe, uh, they describe their Reaper strain, you know, they uh, are like crack addicts. They need to feed every few hours. So it's, they need a dose every few hours or they end up feeding upon themselves. So, yeah, with those numbers, you know, two, one becomes two, two becomes four. You know, it just keeps multiplying and multiplying to it. There's a whole group of them. And... Uh, they end up going to a club called the House of Pain. Uh, they link up with a a team called the Blood Pack that was actually being trained for two years to hunt for Blade. So we're already seeing there's some, some shit going on. There's going to be hatred between the people. And they go into this uh, club called the House of Pain, a safe house for vampires. And that's where they first encounter the, the Reapers. And the vampires did not let Blade know that, hey, they're actually immune to silver, garlic, and a lot of other stuff. Uh, besides sunlight, that's the only thing that they cannot, <clears throat> they haven't conquered yet, and that's still, you know, Blade's domain, Daywalker. They lose one of their uh, teammates, Priest. He uh, he gets turned, and they have to shoot the wall basically to open up some some holes to get the sunlight in. Uh, after that, you're like, you know what? Hey, this is what's gonna happen. They op they capture one of the Reapers uh, and do some autopsy on him, find out what they need to do. That heart is actually encased in bone, so you know, good luck getting a stake through that. And the only thing that the, they can rely on really is sunlight, but that's also deadly to the blood pack that he's rolling with. So they have to go into the sewers because that's where they found the one that they have and they're doing an autopsy on. And he tells them straight up, he's like, hey, you know what? Sun rises in six hours. We're going to have to hunt. You're going to have to deal with it. They end up creating this badass, well, Scud actually ends up creating this badass grenade, uh, light grenade. You throw it 10 seconds later, fuck, it's like a damn sun went off. and <laughs> Like, it's one of those sunbeams that beam through your uh, curtains early in the morning, waking your ass up. So as we're seeing, you know, Blade interact with the blood pack. You know, you can tell he's starting to have some feelings for Nisa, the the main vampire. So, you know, there's going to be stuff with that. Uh, Whistler's calling that out. Like, you know, you and Miss Muffet are getting a, a little too comfy. Whatever, whatever. Uh, after they go into the... After they go into the sewers... Uh, one of the members it was actually bitten and infected another one, the one that they didn't kill, and he didn't let nobody know. So he starts turning on the team. Uh, a guy named Chupa and Reinhardt start beating the shit out of Whistler because they get mad because they lost Priest. So Whistler has to, uh, this pheromone that they harvested from the Reaper, that he starts spraying it everywhere to bring the Reapers in, and that's how he gets away. And, yeah, so it's all out hell in the sewers. He There's thousands, it seems like thousands of them down there. And they're doing everything they can. And they have this gigantic suicide bomb type of looking thing rigged with like maybe uh, 50 light grenades. And it lights up the whole the whole sewer and kills every last one of them until uh, the main guy, Nomak, who actually turns out to be the son of Demoskinos uh, as well. So the, the brother to Nisa, he gets, he gets a hold of Whistler and actually tells him this is what's going on. This is what they really want. Don't trust them. Um... Nisa kind of gets a little bit of the sun grenade and she has to get recuperated so Blade feeds her some of his blood and as he's doing that the Demoskinos and his goons come and taser him and they capture him and of course you know what it is they want his blood they want his organs they want to figure out what the hell makes daywalkers which is what they were trying to do with the reaper train it wasn't something that evolved like they said it was it was something that they designed so they can go after the, the, the daywalker and they failed miserably and no max the evidence of that so now that they have him in his and their sights they're gonna harvest everything their blood his blood lo, uh, organs everything that they can and we actually find out no is actually on the mosquito side he actually has a tattoo saying that he's a familiar on the inside of his lips you know somewhere where no one can see it and they had to blow him up of course like the first one where he was being drained for Lamagra, uh he's you know he's drained with his blood and he has to go recuperate with blood and him and Nomek are tearing through this facility looking for Demoskinos, killing anything in their way. Nomek gets to them first, kills Demoskinos, bites Nisa. So now, you know, Blade, him and Blade have to go to <coughs> have to go toe to toe. And it's pretty interesting. Uh, Nomak is like no other vampire. He's he's the he's the beginning of it, he's the source of it, and he like his agilities and how he can just out punk you know, uh, Blade is insane until Blade, uh, they actually break Blade's uh, sword and he grabs the blade in and he shoves it through the side of the heart. Again, the heart being encased in bone, 
he goes in through the side and he actually gets through and that's how he has to kill him and to, he kind of like just burns away and Nisa you know another love I guess in his life he has to take her he she asked him to take her outside and she wants to see the sunrise as a vampire so you know there you go and yeah guys that um two thumbs up for me it I am biased though GDT I love everything that that guy does so it is on Hulu guys along with the first blade if you want to go I recommend watching them in order very interesting uh, you're engaged the whole time at the edge of your seat guys it's another film I grew up watching fucking love this shit guys let's keep it going though and remember if you're not sinning you're not having fun rock on guys